Last time on Final Fantasy III, Guts go the rogue, stole the horns, and is off to go, I don't know, steal the crystal or something? But who cares about that, though? Some children also got lost while playing, and now we're here to investigate. And by investigate, I mean we're talking to Topapa. Alright, where are the kids? Uh, you, you do realize that's William talking to you, right? <laughs> Poor William. The elder just looks right past his shoulder. Oh, Dante, there you are. Uh, I also live here as well. Whatever, the children went to play in the cave. Alright, well, if they're in the cave, it's easy enough to find that because, well, it's right up to the north right here. And I mean, the cave itself is really easy. If anything here is still threatening you, I don't even know what to tell you. Because that's just kind of sad, to be honest. But I'm sure that's not the case. You would have leveled up a few times before coming back. Don't know how you could have gotten through the game otherwise. Those guys, however, are not really native to this area. I mean, we saw them in the last part. Because those, of course, are bombs. Now, since you can do this uh, little side quest right after you do, um... Kanon? Yeah, Kanon. Like, the moment you find one of those... Actually, wait, does a mobile appear earlier? Now I think Kanon is the first place they appear, but wherever they first appear, that's where you can first start doing the side quest, and you can not make any progress and instead just send letters to friends, then spend a few hours writing to Papa, then taking a break so that you can be able to send letters to him again until finally you're able to do this side quest, and in that case, bombs would still be pretty difficult because they got about 300 HP, and of course they can explode, killing you horribly. Though technically speaking, there are only three of them, so you could survive the battle, even if each one exploded. As long as one other person didn't get hit to death, you'd be A-OK. -okay. Theoretically speaking, of course, I've never actually done that because why would I just stay in the first town until I got this side quest? That'd be kind of pointless. Want to make progress, you know? Be efficient. Okay, person I've never met before who is folding his arms. Well, I guess this was some sort of character development. Because, see, these kids were, were teasing William early on in the game, and now they're giving us... The Onion Knight job. Yes, indeed. The very same starting job from the original Final Fantasy. So, past me, why don't you explain the job while I give it to Dante here? Really past me? You're gonna put this on me now? I'm gonna do job stuff later. Oh, well, whatever. So, Onion Knights work very similar to how they do in the NES version, in that they start off pretty bad. However, the more you level up, the better they get. We'll see about that in just a moment. But I would like to point out one major difference between Onion Knights in this game and the original, and that's the fact that they can use both white and black magic. They couldn't do that in the original, they couldn't use any magic, which, to be fair, kinda made them useless in that version. In this version, however, the fact that they are able to use magic, it just makes them a really good class, eventually. Couple that with the fact that they can use almost all of the weapons and armor in the game, yeah, eventually, you'll have a pretty good character. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering why there aren't any battle models this time, it's because I didn't actually check ahead to see if there were battle models for every class in the game, and it turns out people have only put those up for the beginning classes, so, um, have some trading cards instead. They look pretty cool, right? These stats, as you can see here, aren't that good for a very, very long time. And then you hit level 90, and the character's just like, Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be really good. And eventually, their stats get really good. They max out if you go to max level. So, they have better stats than any other character in the game, but you do have to reach level 99. So, if you don't want to put in the time and effort to do that, I can totally understand that. If you're not going to do any of the bonus stuff like the secret boss, or if you just don't want to curb stop the game, to be fair, that's kind of what I want to do, then yeah, Onion Knight, you probably shouldn't bother with it. 
It does, however, have some unique equipment, and as I said before, eventually will have some very good advantages. And lastly, we have its magic growths. These magic growths are actually the same as another job's magic growths that we'll see much later on in the game. Needless to say, it's not as good as a black or white mages. However, as long as you don't get Onion Knight at the end of the game, the fact that they have so much MP for every spell so early on does give them an advantage. Now, of course, they're not as good as using magic as other classes that, you know, use magic such as black or white mages, but MP usage definitely helps. At the very least, you can have some out-of-battle healing from them, and since they have so much MP, they're pretty good for that. Better so than even white mages for at least a little while longer anyway. And with that done, back to you, past me. Well, I kinda forgot to do two screens for this, so... It's gonna be a mystery what Dante looks like. Okay, you can see his portrait right there, but you haven't seen his model yet, so oh, it's a mystery. So yeah, I'm basically just going to equip my best stuff, and I'm gonna have Dante dual wield now, because, uh... Quite frankly, it's gonna be really difficult for him to do significant damage for quite a while. However, over time, eventually he will be good. Eventually, when I grind, but I probably will have to grind at some point. I mean, where I actually am in the game, I'm definitely going to have to grind soon if I want to do the optional boss, but yeah. Of course, I'm going to have to take time to adjust, but you style the stats right. It's not really going to get much better. He's only one point below what he's supposed to be at, so yeah. But on the bright side, that does mean he is still basically a red mage, except he can use all magic right from the get-go, and I have plenty of MP in comparison to what red mage gets, so... It is a bit of an upgrade magic-wise, though even then Onion Knight's not that good at using magic for a while. I'm not getting Jobber's Remorse from this, oop. Oh. oh, we've seen these guys before. Well, since we, we are seeing these guys headbanging, I suppose that's an excuse for me to cut back over to the Dwarven Hollows, or the island it's on, because we're not going back there, we're going to the cave behind it. Uh... I excuse me? <laughs> I forgot I ran into these guys. Um... I... I forget what they do. I don't think they do anything too bad. Well, I killed them. Um, are they the enemies that can cause sleep? Yeah, I think they might be the uh, ocean enemies that can use glare to cause sleep. Okay, so yeah, they could be annoying, but I kind of destroyed those horrible abominations. I mean, there's already a seahorse, and yet there's a pun seahorse. Alright, well, now that I subtly changed to Xavier, let's move on. Here we are in the Molten Cave. I have to admit, this is really not very apt music. It's decent music for a cave, though. As I said, I mean that more atmospherically, because I don't really care for the song that much. Oh, and by the way, uh, I was about to talk about Final Fantasy 1, but, uh, you know it's fantastic? Remember in Final Fantasy 1 how when you were walking over lava, you couldn't get into random battles? You'd take damage, of course, but you wouldn't get into random battles, so you could avoid them in Mount Golg or any of the secret dungeons if you were walking on lava. Well, that's not the case here! You can get into random battles, because that's fantastic design. Alright, so these guys are crocodas or crocodas, whatever they're called. They can inflict sleep with their physical attacks, but that's just about it. Also, since we are in the fire area, you should expect enemies to be weak to ice and water attacks. So, keep that in mind. Uh, the ice staff is perfect for this. You won't waste MP, because you will probably need MP for the boss, because admittedly the boss is pretty tough. 
I don't want to admit it, but... Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I got distracted, because we have minor upgrades to the bombs. These are balloons. And they don't have too much more HP. They're still in the 300 range, though they are closing in on 400 HP. Uh, but we still took off about half their HP there, and this should finish him for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's overkill. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, th those guys are called Red Marshmallows. They don't really do anything too amazing. Of course, they are weak to ice, but other than that, meh, nothing major. I'm an abomination! And I'm coming to your house after school! Sorry, I, I had to do the Homestar Runner reference. My name's Marshy. I hang out in a volcano. Now I'm over here! I'll still be in this molten cave. You don't know when you'll expect me. Alright. So, by this point you probably noticed, but yeah, lava causes damage. If I haven't made that clear, it is the same as in Final Fantasy 1. So yeah, this is basically Mount Golg, except less good overall. Mount Golg was a pretty cool dungeon, partially because of the music, though the Game Boy Advance version's music was a little beep-heavy, you know? It's... it happens a few times in Game Boy Advance remixes, like... Pokemon Fire Red was rather fond of having these really kind of painful beeps in their song. If I remember correctly, it was mainly the Team Rocket areas, and I, I'm pretty sure that included, uh, it was Silphco, right? The big old building you had to climb, or in my case, descend, because I just go from the top and move down, you know, that, that place. I'm pretty sure that had the BB music that is just awful to listen to in the Fire Red version. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a Myrmes Solion. It's not quite a Myrmidon, so it's not my favorite Fire Emblem class, but these guys can cause petrification with their attacks. It's great, right? We all love petrification. It's pretty great. Thankfully, he's already dead, and he didn't get to petrify me. Also worthy of notes, he is not weak to ice or water. He, in fact, has no weaknesses, so... Don't expect to be killing him quickly. Don't expect to kill the guy who can turn you to stone to die quickly, because that's fun, right? Oh boy. Ah well. At least you don't have to see him again. I don't remember if I ran across him a second time, but I cut those out for a reason. Yeah, I really don't care for the fact that you can get into random battles in the lava. It's bad enough I have to deal with actually healing after being in the lava, but now I don't know if I'm going to be at low HP when going into to a fight. That was the good thing about Final Fantasy 1. The fact that, yeah, sure, you're taking damage, but you're not going to be ambushed when you're at low HP or anything. Oh boy, running out of MP as well. I'm probably going to have to leave and come back in. Ah well, sometimes that's just how it goes. Oh look, there's a rock! I, I wonder if there is some way to move on since there is no path here. Okay, we're back. And I'm gonna touch this rock and... Oh my goodness, there was a wall here. However could I have known? I, I am just... I'm so good. I guessed completely correctly somehow that that rock was a thing you could press and move on. And oh, I think we're at the end. We're in the crystal room. Unfortunately, though, so is Guts Go. I really don't expect a major bad guy to have a ha 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 laugh. It's kind of dorky, dude. Oh my goodness, he's stomping towards us. He must be so incredibly powerful. I don't know if we can take him. This might be a very dangerous fight. Can we do this? <laughs> I'm gonna get you, Warriors of Light! Bring it on! I'm at full power now! You'll never defeat me! I'll defeat you all and eat your hearts! 
and then I'm gonna get your chops so I can be a black mage and shoot fire and also ice and electricity and uh, oh, I'm gonna be a monk so I can punch things. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said this guy was stuff earlier, but can you take this guy seriously? I don't think you can. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is Salamander. Salamander has 5,700 HP, 41 attack, 25 defense, and of course, as you might expect, he can use fire attacks, and he is weak to ice and water. Of course, his fire breath attack is very dangerous because it is a all party attack that hits for a fair amount of damage. And I don't I think I actually ran across it in this fight. Not quite sure about that, though. <laughs> I can't stop looking at him. <laughs> look at his googly eyes! He didn't look that much better in the NES version, either. No matter what, he just looks super goofy. <laughs> oh, where was I? Oh yeah, I, I got lucky, because... Fire Breath can really do some damage, especially since he attacks twice, because he is a boss at all. <laughs> How am I supposed to take this guy seriously? <laughs> take this, Salamander Bites! Yeah, I got a critical go me! <laughs> oh, goodness. Seriously, though, he is a very tough boss. I mean, even if you use a barrage of ice, if you're a little underleveled or you don't get lucky, he can seriously wipe the floor with you. <laughs> it's happened before, and it's been so embarrassing. <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> Guts go the rogue. Also known as Salamander. Also known as completely fucking ridiculous. Oh, there he goes. He's dead. <laughs> Guess that 5,000 HP didn't last him very long. <laughs> there he goes. That major threat was defeated. We thwarted him before he could steal the crystal's full power. <laughs> and he just falls over! <laughs> and Dante's the only one that does a victory pose! <laughs> Everyone else just stands there! <laughs> well, we never speak of this again, right guys? Okay, now we're talking to the crystal. <laughs> crystal, did you see that? Was that your doing? That's not gonna be what we look like, right? When, when we get the fire crystal jobs. <laughs> get the salamander job. It'll look like the goofiest fucker on the planet. That took a second. Eventually, you obtain the power of fire. And we don't even need MP to teleport out of here, so if you really need to, you can expend all your cures, or curas, rather. And thank you, Fire Crystal, for letting us just leave, and there's a place right over here we can heal up. And before we do that, of course, I am going to change jobs. Oh, uh, by the way, the victory music's going, and despite the fact that they really want those horns back, no one's really all that excited. They're just like, hey, you beat Gutsko, good for you, champ. So, the jobs we get from this crystal are the Ranger, Knights, Geomancer, and Scholar jobs. In the NES version, you got the thief from this job, thus ruining the Final Fantasy 1 parallel, and also, you didn't get Geomancer until the next crystal. Which, to be fair, um... Might, there might be a reason for that. So, I don't actually want to change William into a Scholar permanently, We'll explain why in just a moment when I cover the jobs, but this is only temporary. Right, we're going to send a letter, go over jobs, and then I think it'll be about time to stop. And since we're on both screens, I don't actually have to do any editing to do this. Ta-da! Now we can just read this letter. Or, you can, I can't actually read it at the moment because of the format. It's all just tiny little letters to me, but uh, 
Let's summon something encouraging his way. <clears throat> Certainly, I didn't do this letter before when we didn't have the victory theme going, you know, before we beat Guts Go. Certainly not, whatever. Alright, now it's time to go over jobs. So the first of the Fire Crystal jobs is the Knights. Knights are similar to Warriors in that they've got some pretty good swords and some pretty good armor. However, they are more defensive than Warriors, and also for some reason they can use level 1 white magic in the remake. Why? I don't know. They're not good with it. Thankfully though, that's not their only ability. They have a passive ability called Cover. With Cover, if an ally drops to yellow health or further down, the knight will actually block an attack for them if they're about to be hit. Of course, the knight will take the damage in their stead, however that can be very helpful if a character is about to die. As I said before, the knight's main strength is its defense. It also has some pretty good strength as well, however, knights aren't that fast unfortunately, and yet again, for some reason they have some fairly decent intellect and mind stats even though it needs only one of those. And, as I said before, the white magic really isn't worth it. They have no selection and very little MP to actually use it with, so... Get a better class instead. We have white mage, red mage, and, by this point for me, onion knight, so... You should have something better than knight for magic stats. It's really just, I guess, a Final Fantasy 1 reference. Not a very good one, either. Next off, we have Rangers. Rangers are able to use bows and arrows to attack from the relative safety of the back row. In the original version of the game, they had white magics leveled 1 to 3, so they have a slight advantage over Knight in this version, but even then, they didn't really get anything all that useful. In this version of the game, they get the Barrage ability, which is, um, also there. It'll attack four random enemies for slightly less damage than a normal attack would do. I don't really see it as that useful. At low job levels, you effectively have your attack power cut in half, whereas the highest it can get, which to be fair you get early on, it cuts it by about a quarter. Of course, as you might expect from a ranger class, they are very fast and have decent power, but not much in the way of defense, and of course in the DS version of the game, why would you even care about their magic stats? You know, I've heard that Geomancer class in Final Fantasy V isn't all that good. I haven't used them myself, so I wouldn't know. However, that is definitely not the case in this game. Geomancers are some pretty powerful units. Now granted, their armor types aren't really all that amazing so you should probably keep them in the back row most of the time. Though that being said, even if they are few and far between, bell weapons are pretty good and later on get pretty powerful, so if you want to give someone the old belt beat down, feel free, you'll be fine with that. However, the Geomancer's main advantage is their terrain ability. Now, I'm just gonna say this right now, in the original game, you got this class a little while later than you do in the DS version, and it also had one major drawback. Terrain gives you a random effect. In the original version, you could get a backfire effect, which would just end up cutting 25% of your HP off of you. In this version of the game, however, oh no, there is no backfire. No matter what, you are getting a good ability. Now, what ability you actually get depends on your location, and it can be one of these many abilities. Black Hole, Cave-In, Earthquake, Flame Burst, Ice Pillar, Ice Storm, Magma, Whirlpool, Wind Slash, and the ever-so-rare Shadow Flare. Now, I'm not going to actually go over all of these abilities, cause, uh... There are a fair few of them, and a lot of them are just, hey, attempts at instant death, or attack all the enemies for a fair bit of damage, but trust me, almost all the time, they are very much worth it, and again, in the DS version, there is no reason not to use terrain. It can't backfire. Go wild. Use it all the time. It's to your advantage. As for their stats, 
their main advantage is terrain, which is kind of magic, but it's not really based off their magic stat. They, they just have average magic stats, and in general, their stats aren't the best. That's pretty much their only drawback. However, their agility, not bad, so at least they'll move quickly. And sometimes, that's the only advantage you need with a Geomancer. And lastly, we have my least favorite of the Fire Crystal jobs, the Scholar. Scholars are one of the reasons that I wish that this game's job system worked like other Final Fantasy job systems, in that they have a lot of different abilities that I'd really love to use, but aren't really worth using Scholar to, you know, use regularly. If I could use the Scholar to unlock them for other jobs, that'd be great, but no, that's not the case. They also work a fair bit differently than they did in the NES version. In fact, in the original NES version, they didn't even use magic at all. Now, their magic is pretty limited, though their stats, especially for black magic, aren't actually half bad, and in fact, might be a little bit better than red mages. I mean, you'll see in a second, but uh, they can use black magic pretty effectively, but again, their problem is they have almost no useful black magic, only being able to reach Fire Up, Lazara, and Thundara. As for their original abilities, they had the abilities Scan and Peep. Scan would see an enemy's weaknesses, and Peep would see an enemy's HP. Those have been combined in this version, and now they can see the HP and weaknesses of an enemy, and also it can remove any beneficial effects like Protect or Reflect or that sort of thing. It's a pretty good ability, but stat-wise and equipment-wise, I really don't care for Scholars, so... The same goes for their other ability, Item Lore. Item Lore is pretty good, actually, in that it makes various usable items a lot stronger. Stuff such as Zeus's Wrath, or Antarctic Winds will do more damage, potions will heal you more, stuff like that. Again, it could be pretty good, but Scholar itself, well... Uh, aside from books not being that good of an equipable weapon, and their armor, of course, not being all that good, though there's no real surprise there, their stats just... Early on, it doesn't feel like their black magic does nearly enough, and... Black mages will usually outclass them, so... Really, if I want to have a magic user, I'll keep my black mage. And all the other stuff really isn't worth it. I mean, they're kinda fast, but we've had other fast jobs as well. That being said, they are probably the best dressed of the fire class jobs. I mean, look at, look at its competition. What's Geomancer even wearing? Pajamas? I mean, Ranger comes close, but Scholar? Definitely the best dressed. Though, I don't know why they all suddenly need glasses. Right, and we are back. So, with that finished, we don't really have too much to do. We've rescued the Crystal of Fire, but where are the other two crystals? However, next time on Final Fantasy III, I think we have a more pressing issue to get to. That is, of course, what the heck happened with the Argus Kingdom? So next time, we'll investigate that.